What's going to happen to Las Vegas going forward into the future? In a world where travel and tourism is probably a little more rare than it was just a few months ago. What's going to happen to the state of Nevada? How much money comes from the casinos? How much of the local economy is actually made up of casino-related businesses? And what do the casinos have to do in order to win us all back and get us traveling again? This video goes over all of that. It also compares Las Vegas to possibly the only other place in the world anything like Vegas, Macau, China, to take a look and contrast the two jurisdictions. I did this last night as part of my nightly live streams. I did it live, and then a strange YouTube glitch caused me to lose the entire presentation. So I thought I would redo it here for you, give you an idea of what I'm thinking, and you can tell me what you're thinking. So drop me a comment in the box below. Do you think that Las Vegas is ever going to learn its lesson, or are we always going to rely so much on travel? and tourism. Will it come back and it's going to be different? What do you think about that? My name is Steven. I'm not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. I make videos focused on the city that I absolutely love and I hope that I can help you have a better vacation while you're here too. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications and leave us a comment below on what you see. If you want to really help and be in the credits of the video, head on over to the Patreon. You can be in the credits and get stuff I don't post on YouTube or you can just go over to the Teespring store, pick up a coffee mug or something like that. I'll see you guys in the live stream tonight. Let's take a look at the presentation and then you tell me what you think. All right, everybody. So I'm calling this Las Vegas the Big Bet, going all in on Sin City. And before we get started, it is very important for me to remind you, these are just my thoughts. I did some research for you. If you come up with something else or you can fact check me, be nice about it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. But we have to ask, first of all, what is the Las Vegas economy really all about? A lot of people look at the overhead aerial shots of Sin City on a television special or a sporting event or a movie, and they see just the strip. How does this relate to the local economy? That's a good question. And it turns out that 28.9% of all of our money actually come from sales taxes. Now, sales taxes is going to be everything from the expensive uh, Tiffany brand piece of jewelry you buy, the Rolex watch, all the way down to the pack of the gum that you buy in Las Vegas. Of course, much of these sales taxes come from people coming to Las Vegas. All of the visitors we have, and I'll get to that in just a second, about visitorship every single year. So a big chunk of our money is indirectly related to the gaming sector, 28.9%. Next, we have our gaming revenues at 18.2%, taxes and revenues brought in from gaming going into the Nevada and Las Vegas economy. 14.4% of these come from non-financial businesses. These are things that do produce goods, companies that produce services, basically anything that's not related to banking or gaming. 9.6% of these revenues come from insurance premium taxes, so anything you have insurance on, if the casinos are insured, that's an insurance premium. If your car is insured, that's an insurance premium. 4.5% commerce tax from different businesses doing business in Las Vegas. 4.1% <clears throat> cigarette tax, which I added in because it was the last one above 4%. Of course, you know, we'd sell a lot of cigarettes in Las Vegas and we have a lot of tourists. So we likely for a city of about 2 million sell a lot more cigarettes and tax that and collect more taxes in most cities in this size and most states with only 3.1 million people in there. And 19.4% of our tax revenues in the Silver State come from other things like entertainment, the live entertainment fees that you see when you buy a ticket. That's not the resort collecting money on you. That's actually the state imposing an entertainment tax. Financial services like banking and stocks, mining, because we do have a lot of mines in the state. We don't call it the Silver State for nothing. There is actually a ton of mines. The biggest silver strike in America was ever found was in Nevada. And also property taxes, everything from commercial properties with casinos <clears throat> all the way down to the residentials. But we have to take a look also at tourism. Now, tourism has actually grown a lot. Uh, the Las Vegas Convention Visitors Authority started tracking these numbers from what I can tell in 1970. That's the furthest data we have back. I've split this into three different eras. I'm calling it Vintage Vegas, Family Friendly Vegas, and Modern Day Vegas. And we can see back in 1970, the first time they actually tracked these stats, the visitorship to Nevada and Las Vegas in particular was 6,787,650 visitors. <clears throat> Not too shabby considering at the time the city was only all about, what, a couple of casinos and some gambling and some drinking and maybe some of those French cabaret type shows. 
Next, we have 1995. This is a significant year because this was when Vegas was in full family mode. Everything was family friendly in Las Vegas. Bring your kids. 29,2122 visitors this year. And flash forward to I chose 2016 because this is the number one year for tourism overall of all time. We have posted a one year high of 42,936,100 visitors to Las Vegas. <clears throat> this is the highest point that we've had. It has fluctuated but stayed within a few hundred thousand of that for the last three years after that until 2019, the last year that numbers are available. So we can see an exponential growth, a big explosion in growth as tourists who provide all the tax revenues that we just mentioned come into Las Vegas in droves. But tourism is only one part of the equation. We also have to think about the convention business. Now conventions in Las Vegas are a very big deal, but it wasn't always that way. I still have these classified into the same three eras for Las Vegas, uh, retro, uh, vintage retro uh, and family friendly and modern day. We can see that in 1970 when conventions were a lot different. They weren't as big as they were. International travel wasn't as big as it was back then. The world was a lot smaller. We had 269,129 convention visitors. Flash forward to the 95s, the family-friendly Vegas era, it jumps up to 2,924,879, and next we have the peak of the convention business, 2019, with a whopping 6,649,100 convention visitors coming through the city. That's actually a very high percentage of our people that come into Vegas that are tourists and visitors coming for the convention business, and it's a bigger growth than just the conventional tourism. If you take a look, we went from 269,000 to 6 million, whereas before we went from 6 million to 42 million. Well, the question we have to ask <clears throat> is simply, what does COVID-19 mean to Las Vegas travel and tourism? Like, what are we up against right now? What's going on in this world? And the answers I found lie in actually two different places, two different locations. It lies here locally with what the Gaming Commission is doing to set out guidelines, which we talked about on the channel just yesterday in terms of opening and how people are going to enjoy themselves and what the rules will be in Las Vegas. But it also has a lot to do with Macau, China. Macau, China. Now, I chose this because it's the only other region dedicated to gaming on a scale of Las Vegas level. Yes, you have Atlantic City, New Jersey. That is an option for you. But when it comes to $4 billion real estate investments and mega casinos, it seemed to me like Macau, China was the only place that we could really compare to. But there are some stark comparisons, and so we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, first of all, travel, tourism, and gaming has reopened in Macau, and the stats are not great. Uh, the gaming revenues are down 80%. Visitation has returned at a meager 20%. And the major casinos in Macau are currently losing one and a half to four million dollars a day just to stay open and keep the doors open and hope that people get confidence that folks can come back and gamble and do what they have to do. But a famous or infamous person, depending on what you think about her, once said in an interview to Anderson Cooper, Anderson, Las Vegas is not China. And Anderson did that dramatic thing. This man's been in war zones, yet he was so stressed by that statement that he took his glasses off and acted like he had an exeteran headache this big. Either way, we have to remember that because Nevada has something that Macau, China doesn't. A lot of things. Let's get to those right now. Now, second, second factor, Nevada Gaming Control Board. This is the body that governs casino policy in a COVID-19 world, but it governed them before, but they're playing a much bigger role in how the casinos will operate now with you coming back and wanting to have a good time. So the Nevada Gaming Control Board has some outlines that they have given guidelines for every single establishment with gaming in the entire state. Number one, we are to limit to a 50% capacity. So if the fire code said the entire building could have 5,000 people in it, we're only looking for 2,500 right now. Additionally, these are kind of split up differently because the buffet has a capacity for fire occupancy or max occupancy for fire codes, as does the race and sports book, the casino gaming pit, uh, and all these different areas in the casino. So 50% <clears throat> capacity. We know we're going to be socially distanced because we have normally three feet between people. Now we're going to have six. Number two, proper hand sanitization standards for everybody going in 
This means that if the dealers make a change in shift and the dealer changes, everybody gets to re-sanitize. This means if new players come to a table, uh, they have to sanitize the gear and the equipment before the new player comes in. The new player has to sanitize. These are things that might slow a game down, <clears throat> but might keep people safer. Restrictions on clubs, shows, pools, uh, there's going to be guidelines and phased reopenings of the things that could really be close together, close contact, so people are not touching each other on top of each other in a nightclub before there is a complete clearing of this mess that we're in with the COVID-19. And just remember again, Las Vegas is not China. I know, Anderson, you hate to hear it. Now, we have to take a look at the two cities, of course. We have Macau, China and we have Las Vegas. There's key differences between the two of them, the first being the demographics. Now, if you look at where China is, it's sitting in the Asian Pacific region, but Macau, China is in the southern part of China. It's not exactly close to Russia, so it can get the Russian billionaires that own the oil and gas. It's not exactly uh, a drive from any of the other parts of Asia because they're all fly-ins, and people are flying into China much more often. They're flying from international destinations, which makes travel, tourism, all these things a bit of a hassle. Most of Chinese visitors are going to come from the Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, um, mainland China, of course, Hong Kong, China. And some of these places are just basically inaccessible right now. That could be the reflection of that 20%, 80% uh, uh, drop in visitorship, 20% uh, coming back in occupancy. So Las Vegas, on the other hand, has to rely on domestic flights and in our 40 million person base of people in California of which 21.9% uh, of all of our visitors come, 9.9% come from West Texas. These are places where you could drive to Las Vegas. We of course get a lot of Canadians coming here but that is our biggest international visitorship and we can rely on what we have locally with domestic airlines and less risk to air travel from the American population of by the time the census is done, likely 350 million people in the United States. The second thing we have is transparency in government. This is really important too because although Macau, China is in a special economic zone, meaning that people can be more free and more open, it's still behind a Chinese firewall as far as I understand. I could be wrong and if I am, correct me in the comments. They still have far less transparency and they still have far less sharing of information. If somebody went to Macau, China and then went back home and tried to post on their Chinese social network, Weibo, or the the equivalent for Twitter and all these different things that they had a bad time and they got sick, they run the risks of their account being closed and they possibly getting uh, a vanishment from the from the from the government in China. We don't have that here, so we have bigger, broader, overall open transparency and accountability, which makes people feel safe and lets people search out information to make better decisions. Now, what can we do though to save Las Vegas from bankruptcy and from a complete? economic disaster where nobody ever comes back. Well, I figured on a few key landmark goals that the casinos and the industry and the city and the state might want to work on. Goal number one, a clean and sanitary Las Vegas experience for guests and employees. We owe it to the employees working on the casinos. Of course, I'm not going to compare them to a paramedic or a nurse in a hospital, but when it comes to travel and tourism, they are the frontline workers, aren't they? They're the people that are going to see thousands of guests throughout the time that they're on their shift. They're the people that are going to have to be ensured that it is clean and safe for them. Secondly, you, the guest, you deserve to know that it's clean and safe. You deserve a clean and safe environment to come back to and to visit in. So we have to ensure that with procedures, but we'll get to that in a second. Nobody wants to see this anymore in Las Vegas. The outside of the casino is oftentimes as filthy as the inside of the casino and vice versa. This is no way that people want to experience the city anymore. And I'm not just hating on these guys that hand out the naked lady cards. I'm using this as an example for some of the sleazy parts of Vegas that really need to change immediately. Goal number two, cooperation between gaming op corporations for their SOP. This can stand for standard standards of practice or standard operating procedures, <clears throat> depending on who you ask. But right now, what we have is we have a mishmash conglomeration of casino companies all coming out with grand plans in order to keep it safe for you. If one casino requires a mask, does the other. If one casino has thermal temperature scans and requires something happen if you test hotter than you should or show symptoms, what's the standard there versus the other hotel? <clears throat> Standards are good. 
Standards are the reason why computers are interchangeable, why you can plug any set of headphones into a headphone jack. Standards help consumers make better decisions and have confidence in what they're buying or paying for. If every time you bought a car, you had to put a certain type of gas in it, and one of the car companies had to deal with the biggest gas station, you'd probably just flock to them, and it would be a terrible inconvenience if that type of gas wasn't available to you. So we need to have a standard operating procedure or practice shared between the Wynn Corporation, Las Vegas Sands, Caesars Entertainment and MGM Resorts International and everybody else in between. This can be mandated by the state, but I find it's best when you allow industry to self police because they are the ones that lose the most if their customers don't come back to them because they are fractured and broken amongst their practices and their procedures. Nobody wants this. I hear you have a baseball team. Yes, sir, I do. Well, who's on first? I just told you who's on first. No, I'm asking you who's on first. This is where two people don't understand that they're saying the same thing. This is an old Laurel and Hardy sketch, probably a little bit out of uh, your age range for most of the youngsters watching the channel, but definitely worth going and watching. Watch the original, not the Jerry Seinfeld version he did on a television special. Goal number three, innovative marketing to show the people the real Las Vegas in a post-COVID world. Look, the truth is things have changed. The casinos are going to try to glorify everything. They're going to try to make it look like everything's great, but people oftentimes don't trust big corporations. That's a big problem. People don't trust the big boys. Now, if the casinos want to properly do this, they have to reach out and they have to talk on a level that people understand. They can't have a man who makes $1.5 million a year and had to take a pay cut to $1.3 million a year. These are the CEOs of the company coming out and trying to earn the trust. Yes, he can earn the trust of Wall Street all day long, but there's only a small fraction of Wall Street executives that make up the bigger whole of all of the regular, regular folks, people that don't make a million dollars a year that come to Las Vegas. You need to speak the language of everybody, not just the language of a select few. Use the social media networks, leverage what you have. Don't run flashy ad campaigns. Those only go so far with you. Speak on a level that people have a human being relationship with you. Leverage YouTube, Facebook, leverage Twitter, leverage Messenger, leverage all this stuff and use video extensively to show people what the new Vegas is like because people feel a connection to video, moving images. If it's told the right way, stories go a long way. I've been trying to tell stories since I started this channel. Hopefully you guys have subscribed so you can see more of my stories. Number four, complete trust. The casinos will provide a non-invasive guest experience. This is a big one for me because when I read the wins 23 page plan, it was like trying to sit down and read the technical manual to uh, to uh, how a nuclear reactor works. It was too complicated. People don't like complicated things. They get a little bit scared. They get frustrated. Their eyes glaze over and they oftentimes don't retain the information. So give us enough that we know that we have you watching out for us once we're here. That's all we're really asking for. Tell us it's going to be cleaner and show us the best points of how you're gonna make it cleaner and break down the information. Teach us in a way that we can understand and be confident with you. Don't let this be your first experience when you come into a Las Vegas resort like the wind suggests. Every guest has their own security guard. They're giving you a COVID preparedness card and you're getting a face mask and you're getting hand sanitizer and then they're gonna check you if you look like you have seasonal allergies and you might be sick. People don't want that experience. Give them a good experience. And the other reason why we might be able to get through this just fine if people have enough confidence based on the last four factors is this. Disneyland, Disney World, all these different amusement parks and attractions, they're going to be closed for a long time. There's a difference between going to a Disney park and then going to Las Vegas. You see, in Vegas, there's enough stuff spaced out that you could socially distance yourself. And Disney, practically everything is standing in a really long queue unless you buy one of those fast passes. And I hear that they don't even work. Never been to Disney myself. I got to admit it. I'd like to go someday. But Disney is all about sitting on a ride, sitting in a restaurant, sitting, sitting, sitting. Walking around in the Magic Kingdom is great, but the main reason you go there is so you can be next to people and experiencing things in groups. People can gamble on a slot machine. They can socially distance with their spouse who can be a few feet away watching. We can take the gaming tables and reduce the amount of people in them. We can give you that experience where you can enjoy the outside of the strip or all of those things I talked to in a video a few, about a few days ago where you can do all of these different activities and not have to be packed like sardines in a car at an amusement park ride. I've heard rumors that Princess Cruise Lines is telling their musicians not to worry about coming back to work until 2021. There's gonna be a lot of people that wanna travel 
Las Vegas might be one of the only options for them to travel to. So we have a chance to right the ship and be a trailblazer when it comes to getting people back here and giving them the experience in a post-coronavirus type world. And that's gonna be very interesting to me to see. And I'll be covering it on the channel, so be sure to like and subscribe. And all it comes down to is right now, Las Vegas is going to be all there is for a period. And you are the heart and soul of this city. I mean, even right down to the Vegas sign, they're putting up signs saying, we know you wanna take pictures of this iconic sign, Please just stand six feet apart and away from others as you queue up. That's detail. That's them looking out for you. And that's the city trying to hold on to some semblance of not panic mode. So don't panic out there. Be good. Remember, we're relying on you to have trust in us, <clears throat> the people of Las Vegas, that we're washing our hands, that we're doing the right things, that we're going to give you a great experience. And I think if people give us a chance and they do come back, they're going to have a good time. So as you can see, Vegas does rely on the kindness of strangers, people like yourselves to come on in and enjoy the city. Some of you have had a love affair with Las Vegas and you would come tomorrow if they opened everything up. Some of you are a little bit more analytical in your travel choices, especially these days, which I completely understand too. But I think it does rely on the faith of the good people watching this video to give us a shot in Las Vegas to show you a good time. If your options are limited while every other entertainment venue comes back online, then I urge you to make a, deci a decision for yourself that benefits you best. If you think it's best to stay at home, stay at home, but don't forget Las Vegas exists. If you think it's best that you come and blow off some steam, do so with the new rules and regulations that they are inevitably rolling out and have a good time in Sin City. I wanna thank you for watching and I wanna thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, hitting the bell and leaving us a comment. If you again wanna be in these credits, go ahead and hit up the Patreon and you can be in the credits or you can pick up something on the Teespring store and we will see you guys in a future video. Now's the time of the video where I say three, two, one, click. So three, two, one and... Thank you.